Oh my golly, my golly. Can, 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 I, can I be honest with you for a second? For one second, can I be honest with you? Sometimes I hate geeks. <laughs> Sometimes I really and truly hate technology professionals. I'm just, I'm just saying that from the bottom of my heart. Anyways, a as you know, when I create projects for Silicon Dojo and when I do a lot of my educational videos and things, I like the programming language PHP, pre-hypertext processor or personal homepage from back in 1995 or whatever. It's, I just kind of think, is one of the bee's knees as a programming language is. If you need to be able to very easily and very quickly be able to build a dynamic website, PHP is just a good way to go. A couple of lines of code, you can pull in information from text files, you can pull information in from databases, a couple more lines of code in HTML form, you can push data into databases. PHP is just a nice, easy, little programming language, right? So if you notice, uh, whenever I create projects, especially for Silicon Dojo, um, I use Python. I like Python. I like Python, but I like Python for like the infrastructure type stuff. Uh, when I'm dealing with Raspberry Pi, right? So I have a Raspberry Pi. I create a Raspberry Pi vehicle. Dealing with the GPI opens. Dealing with kind of like the back end uh, logic of how uh, my Raspberry Pi code will work. Um, I really like uh, Python. Well, you basically need to use Python. Uh, but whenever I'm going to be creating a web interface, a dashboard, anything like that, I use PHP because, you know, it's simple and it does the job very well. And I can do it quickly because that's the kind of boomer I am. But anyways, right, so since I'm doing Silicon Dojo and I do tech education, people like to come, geeks like to come out of the woodwork and tell me how much of a stupid boomer I am for teaching PHP because I should be using something else, such as using uh, Python itself. Um, as the uh, as basically the the website the uh, the back end um, programming language for the website itself, or I should be using Node or or whatever, right? So, anyways, I've been using PHP for a long time because again, haha, I know PHP; it actually does the job. So I haven't really worried about building websites using Python because I haven't really cared. But again, Silicon Dojo is going to be opening up pretty soon. Um, you know, sometime. <laughs> Oh, the landlord giggled. Landlord giggled when I asked him about the 15th. But anyways, 15th, February, sometime. Dojo is going to be opening up soon. So I decided, I decided, right? I, I'm not, I am not stuck to any programming language. I'm not married to anything. So uh, I decided today to start playing around with Django. Django uh, and see what that is like uh, for building websites and building web applications with Python. Um, and I can say, I can say, wow. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get it. Look, I'm two hours into it, to be clear. I am two hours into this process. But holy hell, it's one of those things. It's like, oh, yeah. Uh, so I could, I could write five lines of PHP code and get something useful. Or uh, I can use Django, which is just, oh, it's a beast, right? Uh, so like here, right, to get this web page, right? So uh, 127.0.0.1 is a loopback address uh, on port 8000. Getting the polls uh, website or page uh, to show up, hello world, you're at the polls index. So this is basically a page being shown to us through Python. Oh my golly, oh my golly. Uh, so this is the urls.py um, uh, script. And in here you have URL patterns uh, and you have to give it polls to do the include polls.urls. So you go to the polls folder and there's another URLs uh, file there. And then here we have this URL pattern equals path views.index name.index which basically means then you have to go to this file over here, and that's where we return an HTTP response of hello world, you're at the Pulse Index. So look, I could, I could write echo, 
double quotation mark. Hello world, you're at the polls index. Close double quotation mark, semicolon, close PHP. Uh, I would be done. Or, or, I am from here, here, to here. To get that, yeah. Oh, that's so much. So much easier. Anyways. So I'm putzing along. I am putzing along with this whole um, Django thing. I do think Django will be good for application. So again, an important, one of the big things with Silicon Dojo, uh, again, one of the concepts of Silicon Dojo is just to explain what these different things are for you uh, so that you know what technology that you should use, right? When you say Django or you say Flask or you say PHP, do you really, truly understand what these things are? If somebody told you to go out and learn Django to build a website, do you know what that really means? Because what Django actually is, Django is actually pretty cool. Now to be clear, now to be clear, Django is actually pretty cool, just for what is he good for. Django is good as a framework to build web applications uh, ridiculously fast, relatively easily, right? Uh, so basically when you install Django uh, for Python, uh, you install the framework uh, in order to be able to get this crap to show up. Uh, you also have a backend, right? You actually have a backend for like user accounts. So it auto creates this whole user account system for you. Uh, for this, it actually also installs, I think it's SQLite, SQL Lite. Um, and the SQLite is installed, so the database is also installed uh, directly for you. Uh, it has all this stuff uh, with uh, security and other things. Django takes security seriously, uh, so sec security is supposed to be built in. This is what I love about the modern world. They're like, yeah, yeah, don't use PHP. PHP is insecure. I use Django because security is built in. And it's like, have you audited the security that's built in? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying with the PHP, I can see what I wrote. So somebody can audit the security. Uh, are you actually auditing the security for your Django uh, environment? Probably not. But anyways, what's kind of cool with Django, right? It's got the database built in. And it's got the user account system built in. Uh, it's supposed to be really quick. Because one of the interesting things with this, right? This actually, this does not have Apache installed. This doesn't have Apache installed. This doesn't have Nginx installed. This just has uh, Python. So this is brand new. So I literally uh, booted this thing up. I, I, I did a fresh build uh, of Ubuntu a couple hours ago. So this literally, this literally just has Ubuntu, uh, it has Python, it has Django on it, and that's it. There's no Apache or Nginx or whatever else. Uh, so it's really quick, again, for the delivery because you don't have the overhead of all that other kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's supposed to be exceedingly scalable, versatile, all of these things. But oh my golly, <laughs> oh my golly, just to, just to get through the basics of this bugger though, uh, it's a hell of a thing. <laughs> So I don't know, if you're interested in this, uh, I've just been going to uh, djangoproject.com. So if you go to like introduction or tutorial for Django, you go through here, tells you how to install everything. Uh, do make sure if you install Django, uh, pip, use pip, make you sure you use sudo, sudo pip install Django, whatever. Uh, if you don't do that, you actually run into problems. So anyways, I am running through this right now um, and we'll see and we'll see how I feel in another few days. My my gut instinct, my gut instinct with Django is I think this will actually be a very good tool uh, for my toolbox for building web applications. So again, that's one of the things with uh, the coding classes that we want to do is create web applications, especially with the whole stupid geek tricks. How do we create applications relatively quickly and easily? And this might actually, this might actually be a way to create applications quickly, easily, relatively securely, right? Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> Just building dynamic web pages? Yeah, I'll, I'll take PHP, I think. <laughs> I think I'll stick with PHP on that one. So anyways, there are some first thoughts. There are some first thoughts with Django. Um, uh, make sure to thumb up this video or thumb down this video. Again, YouTube does not care whether it's a healthy interaction or a healthy interaction. They just want their interactions. Uh, do make sure to leave a comment. Subscribe, of course. And, uh, and all that. And hopefully, hopefully Silicon Dojo is coming soonish. Um, 
you know, like I say, probably a month, probably February 1st. I'm feeling better about February 1st. Uh, January 15th probably isn't going to happen. Apparently, talking to the landlord, uh, he said the electricians alone need two weeks. Two weeks. That's the thing with construction projects. You look at them and you're like, oh, it's almost done. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, the electricians need two weeks. You're like, what? There's not that. Anyways. Uh, so it's not looking good for January 15th. But it does look good for probably uh, February 1st. Um, and we're going to we're gonna be having all these kinds of classes. And this is kind of, I know this probably seems cheesy, but I'm trying to show you the cheese. I'm showing you the how all this stuff works in the real world. Like this is, this is actually kind of how Silicon Doge is going to work. It's basically how... Um, you know, all my educational videos worked in the past where, you know, there's this technology out there like Django or Flask um, uh, or, or Node or Node. I'm not anti-Node. I'm anti-snotty ass Node coders. You can hate Node coders without hating Node. Node and Node coders, two entirely different things. Anyways, see what I'm doing, what I'm doing is all these tools or technologies like my, my thought process here with the education, especially like with the eight hour classes, as I sit here with my experience, I learn this stuff. I learn it. I figure it out. I figure out what you need to know to get off the ground. Uh, and then basically I develop that essentially into an eight hour class. And then that's the initial eight hour class. And so instead of like a 40 hour class on Django and teaching you everything about Django, I'm not going to do the idea is like, okay, how do we, how do we set up Django? How do you interact with the database for Django? What the hell is up with? <laughs> Seriously, what's going on with all this crap? Anyway, figure that all. And so the idea is you, you will then be able to sit down for one eight hour class and then you will be able to get up to speed so that you can come to documentation like this and Google or whatever else to figure out exactly what it is that you need to do. <clears throat> so this is kind of like, this is the, um, you know, this is the, the background of how the educational classes for, um, for Silicon Doge will be created. I, I get to lose my mind. So you don't. And, uh, and yeah, if anybody starts laughing at you for using PHP, <laughs> I don't, I still not learned node yet. I still have, I have still not taught touch node. So maybe, maybe it's possible. I will sit down with node and realize node is the most amazing language in the world. And then I'll, I will do node forever. But I have to tell you, if node looks anything like this horse crap, why would I use it to create a very simple dynamic web page? I don't know. Anyways, with that, I will see you all later. Oh, and what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Holy hell. I have, I have not been really focusing on the internet at all today. And, uh, and I just saw, saw that. <laughs> Holy hell. Tesla's going to die. Is Tesla going to be the next Kodak or MySpace? Are we all going to be sitting around five years from now going, remember Tesla? <laughs> that is... It was just, uh, it was just uh, I think like two weeks ago. I think it was like two weeks ago. And they were writing articles, like Business Insider was writing articles of will Tesla get to $150? That was two weeks ago. Holy bat crap. Anyways.